Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Sonic Mania Encore Plus Edition. I am Drunken Dan. Uh, last time I rambled about nonsense, but then again, that's the, that's the same as every time. So, um, I might be able to wrap this game up today. We'll see. Oh, fuck. If I had tails, I could just fly up to here and not care. But I don't have tails. I have Sonic. Oh. Well, at least it's somebody who can fly. I, I I didn't mean to hit that thing, but I, I overshot it. Oh well. Oh fuck. Bye. I just I hate you. G oh well. You know I, I love the uh, knuckle sprite they made. So. I think I'm... I don't know if I mentioned it when I played Sonic Mania the first time. You know, the, the uh, non-plus uh, edition version. But, um... I love that the, um... Da -da -da, that the game... Not the game. That, so, like, the other sprites, like, say, Sonic Sprite and, uh... Tails of Sprite, are there sprites from 2 and or CD modified? Knuckles of Sprite is brand new. So he could fit in their proportions. Because Knuckles' proportions are a little bit different. Because uh, Sonic 3 has slightly different proportions. I think Tails' of sprite from 3 is mostly the same as this one from 2. But I think they changed it a little bit. I hope I find another one of those boxes so I can uh, get Sonic out of here. Sonic's a little vanilla, you know. Oh, thanks Sonic. As I'm bullshitting Sonic, Sonic's like, I got this bro, whoa! Yeah, he doesn't even talk like that. Why do I do that? I blame Vine Sauce. That's what I'm blaming. Oh fuck. I'm gonna be doing that all game. Oh, I do. Oh shit. I actually wanna go up that way because I wanna see what's up there. Good thing I can just climb up walls and don't need to give a fuck about your platforms. Oh. Let's see if I can actually get a ring for once during this playthrough and not ring a Chaos Emerald. Probably not. Though I am playing as Knuckle. And unlike Sonic, he don't chuckle. He'd rather flex his knuckle. Oh god. I, um... So, I did play a little bit of Streets of Rage. Because I wanted to get myself reacquainted with the game. And, uh... I'm gonna let you know who I'm gonna be playing it as now. I'm definitely gonna play Streets of Rage 1 as Adam. I know he's who I beat it with when I was a little kid. Because Adam is just the best character in that game. Adam had so Street Rage One is kind of slow in terms of uh, its pacing and like how the characters move and you know all that kind of shit. Adam is a power character with a good jump attack. Uh, Blaze is a fine character, but she's definitely weaker than him. Axel's jump attack is crap. I honestly do not recommend playing as Axel personally. I know it's probably like one person watching is like I always play as Axel, and you know that's fine if you want to play as Axel, that's cool. But uh, I, I don't. I don't recommend him. But, uh... Yeah, I, uh... I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to trying to beat the game. Uh, I will use save states between levels for saving progression. But other than that, I'm gonna be mostly just running through it dry. Like, I'm not gonna try and save scum. But, uh... I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm so happy with Streets of Rage 4. But, so yeah, I was replaying it a bit, and I got through several levels before I stopped myself, because I'm like, this game, it's surprising how addictive it still is to me. Like, it's an old game, and it's one of my favorites, like, Street Rage 2 is my favorite one in the series, in case you're wondering. But, uh, it's amazing how good it is. Holy shit, I finally got an emerald. <laughs> like, it's still fun, it's definitely not as good as 2... Uh, not as good as three, but, uh, it's still really fun, and it's the only one you can play as Adam. I was- <laughs> I'm gonna try and stop talking about Streets of Rage, because I was about to go into childhood stuff. I want to wait, wait for Streets of Rage for that. So, you know, I'm gonna stop myself, because I want to go over my, uh, history of the series when I'm doing that, because I feel like that makes more sense than me talking about it now when I'm playing Sonic the fucking Hedgehog. If I wasn't playing on playing Streets of Rage, it would make sense, but, you know. I am. Well, not getting that. 
Ah, oh, fucking hell. I like how the blade just stopped right where I was, too. Nope, we're not getting, like, sawed again. I see a saw. See a saw. I'm sorry. <laughs> God, um... I already recorded it, but uh, you guys should know from the poll. This will, this video will come out before it, so I'll just say it here, I guess. Um, Tales of Berseria won the voting thing. I already mentioned it when I played Tales of Berseria and I went into more details. I already recorded Tales of Berseria. That comes out, like, towards the end of the week, but... That's the RPG I'm doing now. Um, I will at some point go back to Fallout, because I do want to do some of the... Oh, son of a bitch. I am... I am on a roll today! Just running into all the spikes. I couldn't do better if I tried. <laughs> this game sucks! No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. This game is excellent. This isn't Sonic CD. I forgot, I used to know the strategy for this. Oh yeah, I think it's, um... Stay, like, here. Because then you can always get a shot. Alright, so... Yeah, that's what it was. The strategy I, I saw um, from the speedrun was, uh, like, just stand here, see which crushers come up, because you can always get a shot that way. Yep, like that. I just, I didn't, I don't know why I didn't think of that. You think with all the times, oh. I can't remember, there's a number that it always is. You, you know, the one that he comes down on. I think it's like the fourth one? I don't know. Whatever, I'm just trying to watch so I don't get crushed. Ah, damn it. I switched to Sonic in case I had another incident like that, because... I would have got it if I was Sonic, because Sonic can jump higher. Let's see if I can get something. I don't know where all the things are. Some people know exactly where everything is positioned. I'm going to take that just for some extra points. I could use a continue or two. I have so many more continues on my own playthrough that I have not beaten, because I've been playing a lot of other shit. A lot of things have come out, and I've just been jumping from game to game. I still need to play more Copy Kitty. That's a game I would like to record at some point. In fact, I think I originally was gonna do... Oh, wait, no. No, no! Oh, well, well, here we are now! I did this to myself! On the plus side, if these two die, I don't care as much. Because they're not my favorite ones to play as. Oh! <laughs> I, don't... I shouldn't have done that! I should have died! But you know what? I'll take it. I'm trying to think of any, like, dumb things I want to ask you guys about. Um... I'm kind of curious. So, I've mentioned before in the past and all that fun... Uh, before in the past. Yeah, I'm redundant. Uh, I've mentioned that, um... Sonic was one of my first video games I played. So it's kind of why I have, like, this fondness for the series. Specifically, like, the classic series. But I'm kind of curious. What was the first game you guys played? Uh, what's a game, like, you have, like, a giant fondness for that you absolutely adore and love... Even if the game series is kind of, like, faltered or not as good as it used to be, I'm just kind of curious, like, what, what's one for you, like, that you, like, adore? Even though, even though you probably stop adoring it. And stop praying for good things that come out of it. Uh, for me, it's this, obviously, this is one thing. There's a number of games that I absolutely love, this was a series. But, uh, god, where do I go? I'm gonna take Sonic out. That way, if I run into one of those things... Okay. That way, if I run into something or I die, it's just Sonic dying, and it's not a big deal. Oh, okay. I guess I'm the right size. Okay, let's go back to you. That's one of the good things about Mighty, though, is he won't take damage if you flub an attack. So, Mighty's not bad. I just prefer, um... Sonic the Hedge Fund. Not Sonic the Hedge Fund. Um, the other characters. Sonic is definitely the most vanilla, though I think he's the best for speedruns, I think? Don't quote me on that, I'm not a speedrunner. I, I can't do speedrun gameplay. And I'll tell you why, and it's not like, Oh, you shouldn't play games like that and abuse glitches and all that fun, stupid shit. No, I'm, I'm not like that. That's not how I feel. Okay, I'm not gonna be able to get that. Well, Mighty can get it, but Sonic cannot. 
and I don't want to sacrifice my shield, so we'll continue onwards. But I might be able to get some good stuff here. So let's see if we can get, like, a continue or something. I don't know. I'm not... No I don't know what I'm expecting to get out of this. Other than maybe pain. Oh, I got some rings. There's, there's that. Here's one thing I gotta say. Um, I know I probably... I'll probably forget to say this during Yakuza, because how me and Train Man tend to talk. But, uh... Is it me or the, or the Crane games harder in Yakuza Kiwami 2 versus 1? Because I could consistently get whatever I wanted in a... Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, no. I lost all my scores, so that went the fuck. <laughs> Good job, me! Oh, did it! <laughs> I'm actually curious, guys. So, I know they... Was it... The Simpsons people, they did, um... Like that fantasy series, uh, was it Disenchanted? I'm curious, is it any good? I have Netflix, I could watch it, but I'm lazy. There's other shit I still need to watch. I still have, like, a huge chunk of My Hero Academia that I need to watch. And, like, still need to finish watching the, uh, OA Demis Teen anime. There's a lot of shit I still need to watch. So, so the funny thing with me, and I, I've probably mentioned this in recordings, it's very easy for me to, uh, play a new game. So I'm usually on top of games. But shows, I tend to slack a bit. Eh, let's try again. So, I end up being like ahead of the curve when it comes to TV shows, but behind the curve when it comes to everything else. I don't really know what I... I, I did again. I, I did again. Oh, no! Let's see, let's see if we can do it a third time! <laughs> Let's just try to get a regular shield. Stop fucking this up. For the love of God. Now you love it when they just go right in the middle. Too bad it's not like an actual arcade machine where you can just start tilting it. Though, of course, the machine will actually just start acting up and be like, I feel you tilting me, asshole, and then lock up. I think they do that. It's been a long time. Like, dude, when's the last time anybody who's old enough has seen an arcade... Outside of, like, a theme park, because a lot of times theme parks have an arcade. I, I, and I would never spend a lot of time and money in a theme park at an arcade. What are you talking about? Okay. When I was in high school and they took us to Six Flags or middle school, I spent, like, the entire day in the arcade. So sue me. I, I'm not really a thrill ride guy. I haven't been to a theme park in years. Because, uh, the last time I was at a theme park was when I was in co no, college, high school. About, oh god, ten years ago now. Because that was like in 08. Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm old. But, um... But yeah, I was never... I'm, I'm still not a thrill ride guy. I would love to go to a theme park again at some point. But, uh, I don't know when or if I will. Depends on money and shit like that. But, um, the... Oh, God, there it goes. That guy's my shield. But, yeah, I, I, uh, I liked it. But, yes, yeah, like, it was when I went to Disney, I didn't really do much of the thrill ride stuff. Why did I do that? I gotta wait now. I mostly did, like, um, how was it? Like the, like, the movie or, like, the more calming rides. That's kind of what I preferred doing. No. Let's just... Let's just bring everything out. I don't care. Fuck it. Let's just... Let's just bring everything out. Because you can. Look at those stupid little drill things. Look at them go. And all these evil Amy's. Why is Amy an enemy but can't be an actual character? I wish Amy was like an actual character here. Rather than just being like... A boss flourish. Alright, now let's finish this asshole off. I like how you beat him just by knocking him out of his thing like a fucking gacha machine. I don't really have a lot of gachapons. Uh, not gacha, gachapons. Blech. They don't really have, like, gumball machines around where I live much anymore. They were... <laughs> Mighty just always does this. He does not want to be on top of there. But I remember gachapons were, like, all the rage when I was a kid. There was a ton of those. Well, not gachapons, but, like... Little, like, junky toys and, like, little toy earrings and 
rings and like those little sticky hands. I remember a lot of those. I like the transition here. It's really nice. It's a lot better than... And now we go to the Titanic! I'm actually a little disappointed, though. They have this big robot here, and you never fight it. Maybe you do if you get all the emeralds in this mode. I don't know. And I don't think I'll ever know. Because I'm not getting all the emeralds today, at least. Right. There we go. Now this will change me into random assortments of characters. Do I want it? Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, good. We're back. We're back where we started. <laughs> where is these two chuckle fucks? <laughs> Sonic is just not leaving. He refuses. Well, I'm going to play you now, fuck boy. You will leave this party. Eventually. You know, actually, I just thought about it because I said leaving the party. Uh, for those of you who play, like, tabletop shit, I'm kind of curious, like, how do you or your DMs handle, like, when a character or a player kind of just wants to stop playing their character? Do you let them? Do you... Like, what do you do? I'm curious what you do. I can tell you what my one DM did. Um, do you let them just do it for the sake of game... For the sake of having fun with the game? Do you... Kill off their character, or do you just make a story thing for them to leave? So, um, my one DM, I ended up going through characters because um, there was two new players, and one of them was um, thankfully now X because the guy was kind of toxic. But uh, he was kind of toxic, so I was trying to play characters that kind of placate to it and leave less issue. Now, at first, I was uh, playing a, the summoner. I dropped him because our party was too squishy. Because everyone wanted to be <laughs> mages in that group. So, that's why I also I never played a mage until recently, and I've only uh, ever been like frontliners. Though I like frontline stuff. Though I also like my mage. Um, she's actually probably one of my favorite characters I've run, which is going to be a shame when she fucking dies. But, um... <laughs> so, I then played my brawler for a little bit. But then there was issues because he, I made a, I gave him a very abrasive personality. He was one of those characters where he acts very abrasive, but he's like genuinely a really nice person and, and actually wants to help people. He's one of those. You, you know the type. Tsundere. But, um... I eventually switched off of him because of uh, a thing with that. And then I, I ran my second paladin, who I've mentioned occasionally. And I ran her for a while until, um... Uh, one of them left, uh, was it he left, um, thankfully, and, um, I th was like, and DM's like, alright, do you want, I know you wanted to still play as Brock, that was the brawler, do you, what do you want to do, do you want to just switch to Brock, and I was like, I mean, I kind of do, I mean, I like uh, my second paladin, but I kind of wanted to play Brock, too, but the problem was, there was no in-character reason at that time for Roxanne to leave the party. She knew about the big bad, and she's a good aligned paladin who, like, there's no way in hell a paladin worth her grain and uh, her, her fucking weight is gonna fucking leave when there's, the big bad is going to come and fuck up the world. Like, that's just not happening. They're not gonna do that. There's no paladin alive. So the DM gave me an out. After we were done the dungeon that we were in, and finished uh, Roxanne's own personal quest, um, he gave me and her the, an option. So she gets a vision from Ayamade. That was the, she was a paladin of Ayamade. And uh, in this vision, she is shown two scenarios. She can either continue onward with her friends and help them fight the, uh, the big bad. Or, instead, the other option. She can instead opt to go back home and she'll be able to rally her, uh, church of the, 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 uh, the paladin, the Amadean paladins to launch an assault on the big bad to support our, uh, our, our player, our, the player characters. And if she leaves, 
she doesn't need to worry about her friends because two figures are shown. Two old friends of theirs returning. One large muscular man in a dragonborn. That was uh, the other person's player because he did the same thing to try and avoid drama too. We both switched to try and avoid drama. Um, so because of that, uh, Roxanne had an out, and so did um, his character's character. Uh, his character um, that he was playing had an out. Though honestly, she already had an out because she didn't really sign up for the shit that happened, and she wanted out anyway. She was only there to help uh, her find her father because she owed uh, Roxanne's father a favor because um, basically he saved her life. So we were able to switch off and play as the brawler and blood raider. He was like a like a drag. Actually, it was like a blood rager with like dragon blood. It was weird, but um. So yeah, that's how RDM did it. He also had a rule where um everyone just got a free reroll, like no questions asked. Uh, doesn't need to be negotiated with anybody. You get one uh, per campaign. So like, let's say you make a character and you decide, man, I fucking hate this character. He would just let you reroll because, hey, why not? But after that, you were stuck. Um, and that's how he rolled. My current DM, um, or DMs, I'm not sure how they roll, but I don't really want to drop either of my characters. I like, um, my Monk and I like my, uh, Arcanist. They're really nice. In fact, I even <laughs> told both DMs, if they die, if you can give me an out to still play them, I I'd still like to play them. But at the same time, I told them, like, I'm not gonna throw a fit if they die. I mean, I might be a little annoyed, because, I mean, I think everyone gets a little annoyed when their character fucking eats it. But, uh... Like, I'm not, I'll roll up a new character. As to what I'll do, I don't know. Um, for Marilyn, I told my DM I'm probably just gonna roll another monk. Because I'm really enjoying playing Marilyn. And I enjoy her toolkit. I might kit the character out differently. Um, in fact, actually, uh, thankfully my DM is fairly uh, lenient. He um, will let me... He's let me retool. Because uh, during one of my levels, I took Scorpion style, which is pretty good. But Marilyn doesn't really use it. It's not really her character just to be stunning people. She usually just tries to wail on you until you, you're you out. Uh, that's her way of fighting. She just decks you until you no longer are moving. Oh, fuck. <laughs> but, uh... But yeah, so she's fairly simple. She's very aggressive in a fight. She's good aligned. Um, her, her whole thing is... When she's fighting to the di against someone that's trying to kill her, she will use lethal force, and she has no qualms of killing. But if you actively surrender, she won't kill you. You're surrendering at that point. She doesn't really have a whole thing. She doesn't really like the idea of killing a helpless, fo a helpless foe. In terms of if she's a pacifist... No, no, she's not a pacifist at all. She very much enjoys fighting. She loves it. Um, her favorite things are fighting, food, sleep. Those are her favorite things in the world. She also likes cute animals, but she's very bad with them. So she can't pet them, because her handle animals crap. Actually, I did give her a level to handle animal because of character reasons. That's another thing, I, I tend to have this habit where I'll give characters skills or levels in something just because it makes sense for the character. Oh, I can get rid of Sonic now. Cool, I got Ray back. And, uh, um... So that's what I did with, uh, her. And, uh, her styles are, she has the pummeling style and the punching style. <laughs> I told you, she's all about just hitting you. That's all, all she does is she hits people. And shoots fireballs, because uh, it's an Unchained Monk, in case you're wondering. Um, you know, uh, the monks that are, are, are apparently really good. I, I've never played a regular monk, but I've heard stories. In fact, when I was said I wanted to play a monk, I was like, yeah, I want to play a monk. And they're like, you play an Unchained Monk. And I was like, I play an Unchained Monk! So I played the Unchained Monk. You know, I kinda wish I could draw, because I would love to do, like, videos just talking about, like, D&D stories, or, like, Pathfinder stories, because they would be kinda funny. Um, but, uh... I, I can't draw. I yes, I've been watching a lot of, like, Puffin Forest and Animated Spellbook and Dingo Doodles. Leave me alone. <laughs> But, uh, it would be nice, but I can't draw worth a shit, so I'm not going to try. 
I mean, I could make like, I guess like a vlog series of just, or like a vlog sort of thing. With maybe like just some basic images, I could do that and just reiterate some things that I've mentioned. And like character builds and shit that I've done. Um, but yeah, I, uh, <laughs> shit. But yeah, I, I like Marilyn a lot if she dies. But yeah, so the other things with Marilyn, so like th that's her thing. She's good aligned. She's a sweetheart. Um, she doesn't really want to hurt people, like, in the sense of, like, she wants to help people. Like, she legit wants to help people, but she's dumb. She's, she's very dumb. She has a, an intelligence score of 8. She's not a smart girl. Um, but, uh, she, she, she's a sweetheart, though. Her, her heart's in the right place. There's a way to break this encounter, and I don't know it. Come on. If I was... Oh, okay, yeah, he can't do that. Oh, well, there goes my uh, my ring. Shit. Well, at least I hit him. Whoop. Damn it. Okay. Ha! Ah! It's actually frustrating. Got him. Got him one. How many more hits do you take? Oh, good! Knuckles, you did it! Thank you so much, you dumb, dumb creature. But, uh, what was I saying? But yeah, I, I enjoy Marilyn. Um, her key abilities, in case you're wondering what I took, um, were Scorching Ray. That was actually the first one she took, so she had Scorching Ray at, like, level 4. Uh, that was, like, the first thing I gave her, which is great, because I'm playing Reign of Winter. <laughs> uh, I gave her Scorching Ray. <laughs> Sorry, I had a little... Can add a little bit of something up here. She took a Scorching Ray for her first key power. Her second key power is Bark Skin. In fact, actually because of her equipment and her level and her dex, and if she has a Bark Skin applied, she will have... She has an AC of 27. Which is kind of ridiculous, so I rarely get hit. Though I did get hit in a recent thing, and she nearly got fucking murdered. I literally had a moment of like, oh crap, I don't have this character planned. And I was just like, fuck it, I'll just roll Marilyn, but I'll call her Barilyn. That's also a gag I have when I don't have something prepared. I'm just like, I'm just gonna play Boletta. That's the Arcanist name. Um, which I'm not even against doing because I'm a bitch. And when I don't want to stop playing something, I will fucking do what I can to keep playing the stupid thing that I want to play. But, uh... Yeah, Marilyn's a lot of fun, though. I, I like her. She's a sweetheart. She's dumb. And, and like I said, this is the first time I've actually played a dumb character. So, the group that I play with now, they tend to play a lot more roleplay heavy. Where before, there was, like, maybe, like, one or two people that were really in the roleplay. And that's fine. Like, I'm not gonna say, like, oh, you have to be blah blah blah. Like, you play the game how you want to play. Uh, but that's how it was. So because of that, I kind of became the party face in almost every campaign I was in. Uh, I was like the secondary party face in my very first one, where everyone but one other player was new. And the one guy was really into role playing, and the other guy was not. Well, the other guys were not. Um, because uh, that was when I played my first paladin. In fact, the one thing about that DM though, he was kind of a killer DM. In fact, like looking back on it, it is extremely surprising my first character didn't fucking die. Like, the more I think about it, the more I, I get why some people say I have dumb luck. Though, I, I don't think that luck's gonna keep going for much longer. Just call it a hunch. Like, I ha so, in terms of my rolling, I tend to be that guy who rolls fairly bad to medioc mediocre until my character is, like, about to die. And then, suddenly, they'll fucking start pumping out crits. Like... I'll just start rolling 20s. <laughs> I don't know why. If it's something that's going to kill my character, I tend to luck out that way. But only then. But I don't think that's going to last much longer, if I'm going to be completely honest. I think my luck with that is going to run out soon. I honestly have, like, a sneaking, instinctive um, belief that either Maletta or Marilyn are going to die. 
just because I, I just feel it. I just, I just a feeling I get. If they die, I'll let you know. If they don't, I will also let you know. But yeah, on the thing, so the, yeah, the DM that was playing it, he's like one of those. I, I learned later from like when, when it, from him talking, he's one of those DMs who actively will try to kill the party because he plays it like Dark Souls and will actively want you to go through like 13 characters. In fact, actually, at one point he's like, you guys should have been through like five characters by this point. What the hell? And he was dead serious. Like, he wasn't like joking. He was honestly kind of annoyed that none of us had died yet. Now, he's a friend of mine. Like, don't get me wrong when I say this shit. I don't, I, like, this isn't like a grudge. I'm just telling you how he runs things. Personally, I don't like that, if you want my opinion. So, like, I usually don't run with him as a DM anymore. And th that's nothing against him. Like, like th this isn't me, like, calling shade or saying, like, if you DM or, or play games like this and you enjoy it, that you should, um, you, that you shouldn't enjoy that. That's not what I'm saying at all. I would never say that you should play it like how I play it. Because that's just dumb. Not everyone's going to play their games the way I play it. Oh, wait, is this... Actually, I think I just cheesed where I was supposed to go. I think. Did I? Or did I backtrack? I backtracked. Wait, what, what, what will this take me to? Nothing. Okay. Okay, well, that's at least one obstacle I don't gotta worry about, so I can at least do this the way I was going to try. But, uh, the second DM, he was the one that I, uh, I, I went, went through a couple characters with. Uh, he, like, actively hates killing characters. He's the opposite. Um, so he usually tries to avoid killing your character if he can. It's not like he's never killed a character before. He killed, um... Uh, was he killed a couple of the characters actually in the final fight of Rise of the Rune Lords? But uh, yeah, typically he tries to avoid doing that because he just doesn't really like killing people. Though um, I did have like a close run in with my second paladin. She almost got one shot in. In fact, she would have been knocked out. Oh fuck! She would have been knocked out if um, I was playing my. Was it, uh, if I was playing a character who didn't have... She had a feat that allowed that I took from Nathaniel. Because I gave her a lot of Nathaniel's tool set. Not all of it. Uh, I mean, she ended up being a higher level than him. That, Nathaniel's my first paladin. I feel like I should clarify. And also her dad. Um, also, something I noticed about all of my female characters when I played them. All of them have adopted dads. Like, okay, so... Nathaniel's is different than the other two. Um, Nathaniel was, uh, was it he married, so Roxanne was already born. Um, what happened was Roxanne's mom was a former assassin in Thief for a cult. She wasn't like into the cult, like into the, like the beliefs. Uh, she was a poor girl and it was safe and it provided her money and food. And she kind of had a relationship with one of the cultists. Again, she didn't really wasn't into the cult, and she got pregnant and had had the baby, and she and she wanted to keep it and raise it. And then she learned the cult was planning to use it as a sacrifice. So she got the fuck out of Dodge to save her baby. After she got the fuck out of Dodge, uh, she kind of ran around for a while, just kind of stealing food and money where she could to feed her child. And one of the last times that she was in, where she close to where she had a shack, happened to be where Nathaniel was stationed as a uh, early level paladin. He was working, he was doing guard duty. And so Nathaniel, she, as we wrote, wrote it, she crit fails a stealth check. Um, he arrests her and she cries out about her baby. Nathaniel hears this. So after she's arrested, he goes to investigate around the outskirts of town and finds a small house. Um, and in that house, he finds baby Roxanne. He immediately takes her and decides to take care of her. Let's 
good that I have one of these at least. If I had the electric shield, this would be just a joke. But I don't. I forgot that I need the electric shield. That, that is my B. Alright, well, we're going to be doing these now. I gotta get some of my rings back. Okay, cool. Up, oh, he's got the uh, the uh, barrier back again. But uh, so he married the uh, thief. So basically, um, he visits her in prison with her baby, and offers her. So he he his family owns a farm, not like a big farm, but just a farm. And um, he offers her to work on the farm for you know an honest living. So he so they can uh, feed so she can feed her baby. And she accepts it, and he actually helped partner since her crimes were just to feed a child. And he, he felt like he didn't want to punish this this mother for trying to take care of her baby. I'm gonna be going through fucking characters, man. Whoop! Dodged it. It should take us back soon. Yep, there we go. I gotta try and keep these fuckers alive. Come on. Do your thing. I wish I had the electric shield so much. And you can't even do, like, two hits on him. That's the sucky part. But he's gonna shoot his missiles, so let's just do that. And I can't even tank to try and sneak, sneak an extra hit, because I'm, I'm out of rings. I gotta hope when he, uh, kidnaps me that there's rings on the other side. Are there rings? No. Well, there goes Knuckles! I'm down to three characters! That was a little risky, but I went for it. I probably shouldn't have. Okay, he's gonna start shooting his electricity now. Thank you, Sonic, for the extra hit! Alright, hopefully there's rings. Please be rings. Please be rings. Where am I? I is this new? I don't remember this. Uh, that, that was rude. I couldn't see that. Okay, cool. But so basically, one thing led to another, and the two got married. Um, fun, uh, interesting note, I guess, about Nathaniel is he is asexual. So, it was a they had a romantic relationship, but like that was it. There was never like sex or anything because he's asexual. He doesn't have any interest in it. He's completely uh chaste. And uh which she was fine with, especially after the shit she dealt with with her ex. She was perfectly okay with having a ch having a husband who had no interest in sex. She could she was perfectly fine with that. He was kind of an abusive dick. He was like the exact opposite of him in every way, practically. Oh, lost my ring. If I can be on this side, I can get some extra hits in. Oh, well, he's dead. And that's kind of her backstory. Uh, Maletta was, <laughs> as I got revealed, the daughter of the chopper. And, uh, she managed to escape. Well, she, so, okay, so this happens. Okay, so they add more to the cutscene, so you know everything's fucked. That's actually good. I'll probably do this on my own to beat it, like, with the actual true ending, but not for this LP. I just wanted to kind of go through the motions. But, uh, let me try to finish this. So, but her adoptive dad is funny enough, the sheriff of the town, Hemlock. <laughs> At least that's what ended up happening. Completely by accident. And Marilyn, my monk, is semi is semi adoptive dad to my brawler, Brock. So her, her backstory is she was lived at this monastery that was kind of shitty. Because they treat they treated her like crap. She was kinda neglected. And Brock, who was not a monk at the monastery, he was just a carpenter, but kinda lived there and you know, usually would fix up the place for them. Like felt bad for for her. He was younger at the time. 
and, you know, took care of her, kind of taught her how to fight, and, uh, taught her how to brew alcohol, because she knows how to brew the alcohol. Brock's also a drunk. Probably less so now with the time skip, but, uh, he learned that they were going to kick her out once she hit her, I think it was her sixth, her 17th birthday, she would be able to get kicked out, because considered adult, but, like, a kid can leave at 15 if they choose, because they're considered to be old enough to make their own decisions. Uh, Brock, before this, decided to leave because he wanted to try to get himself stronger because he's like, this girl is too dumb to last on her own. At least that's what he believed, and also he was worried about her and actually cared for her. So he leaves, and uh, the whole events of Rise of the Rune Lords happen. He fights the final boss. So he comes back, now a level 20 character, God, and he comes back to the monastery. He's like, all right, um, she's should be 17 tomorrow. I should be able to just pick her up now, adopt her, and then we can just go. And I can take care of her, maybe find her, you know, a nice quiet village to live in. She can just work at a bar. Everything will be fine. She's strong enough to defend herself against some, like, drunk. It's fine. And then she learns he left. I mean, he learned that she left. So, that happened, and he was not happy. So, he's actually looking for her while Marilyn's doing the whole Reign of Winter quest line. And, uh... But yeah, those are my three characters that are female, and all of them have adopted dads. And two of them are previous characters I've played. I, I, do I have, like, an issue? <laughs> it keeps happening, man. But uh, that's that's it with that. I want to talk about the guy. The other guys are just kind of normal. Brock was just that. I already told you his backstory, Nathaniel's backstory. Canarian was a former strategist. And um, Tor is just a wandering warrior who just wants to fight things. Except where Marilyn's good aligned, he doesn't really care about good or evil, just whoever will give him a better fight. That's all he cares about. But, uh, do I have any final thoughts on this game? Um, not really. I've already said how much I like this game. Oh, Atlas helped with the marketing. That's kind of cool. I mean, Atlas is owned by Sega now. But, uh, yeah, it, I don't really have anything else to say about this. It's just really good. It's a really good game, and I loved it. I liked the... The Encore Plus mode, or Encore, what was it, the Encore mode, I think it's called. I like it, though I personally prefer the regular mode. Um, I don't know if they changed the final boss for this. I should look it up sometime. So I'm kind of debating if I really actually want to do that on my own. Because I don't like it as much as the regular. It, it's a fun distraction. But, you know, not nearly as fun, in my opinion, as the main game. But, um... Yeah, I think that's about it. Like, nothing else to really talk about for Sonic Mania. Got kind of a while just rambling about D&D &D and Pathfinder stuff. I've talked a lot about that now lately. I've had on the mind a lot. Like I said, I, I don't know. Part of me kind of wants to do it, but I'd do it as a separate channel. Like, I don't know what I would call it. Dungeons and Dans? <laughs> well, that's a little too corny. But, uh... It would have to be like a vlog, because I can't really animate or draw. Maybe what I would do is I would use whatever like token piece I use for my characters. So, like, uh, Marilyn and Maletta actually have, like, tokens that I had commissioned because I, 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 there's an artist that I commissioned for shit like that. She's really good and she's fast. I, I love her. She, her art's great. And, uh, like, she's a really good artist. Um, actually, I'll, uh, put her link down. Uh, she's good if you, especially if you're playing female characters because that's what her specialty is, like, more feminine characters. Uh, I know she can draw guys, but she specializes in drawing girls. Um, but, like, if you're looking for to make, like, a cute character, um, definitely go to her. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll have to remember to put her, uh, her Twitter in the, in the, uh, description. But, uh, you don't need to tell her I sent you or anything like that. Just, just, hey, if you like her art and she's opening commissions and you want to commission her, do it. But, uh, yeah, I don't think I have anything else. I don't know. Tell me what you guys think about the, the, the thing for another channel where I just talk about, like, D&D &D stuff or, like, like just go through, like, quick stories. I'll probably write it up so I can make it quick and snappy so it's, like, a three-minute story. I won't, like, summarize the entire events of a campaign. Maybe just tell you little events that happened in a fight or just little funny, th just dumb little things that have happened. Maybe little things that we did that drove the DM crazy. Maybe ways the DM just fucking annihilated us. You know, shit like that. I've been playing as long as, like, some of the people probably listening to this. But I could, like, tell you some of the stuff from my first campaign, like, me as a new player and some things that happened. There's definitely one story from that campaign that I would love to tell you guys about, where something I did in the beginning of the campaign as a gag came up later and saved my ass. 
Uh, yeah, you know what? Yeah, just let me know what you think in the comments. And, uh, you know, all one of you that comment. <laughs> and just, uh, yeah, maybe I'll do it. It'll be a new channel. It won't be on this one. Uh, I'll probably commission a thumbnail for it and some art for it. Just so I have, like, you know, a whole setup for it, so that way it's not the same as this channel. And I'll just talk about D&D shit on there. Doesn't mean that, like, me talking about D&D and Pathfinder won't bleed into here, but it, it could. It'll, it'll probably still happen. But I'll, like, save, like, actual, like, me where I write down a script and talk about it for that, and maybe I'll try to do, like, once a week, once a month, something like that. If I can help it. It depends on how well the channel takes off. If the channel takes off, I might focus on it a little bit more, and maybe you'll see a few less videos on this channel. I'm gonna, gonna be honest with you. Because uh, if people like that more, I might focus on it a little bit more. Though I might run out of material, because I haven't played Pathfinder for years. But I could try to, like, give you, um, like, stories of, like, fr what friends of mine have done and shit like that. Though... If you do want, like, D&D stories that you would like to hear, um, I know Roll20, or Critical Role is a thing. I still need to listen to that. Apparently, it's really good. But, uh, if you want to listen to, like, quick stories, Puffin Forest is really good. Uh, I love his videos. He does not just D&D, he also does, like, uh, he did, like, a Call of Cthulhu one. There's a couple other ones that he did. I think there was a Dresden one. Puffin Forest is good. Uh, Dingo Doodles has done only literally like one story that's gonna have a third part, but it's good. I recommend it. And um, her channel's fairly new, and her stuff looks good. I, I'd say just check her out and see if you like it and subscribe. And Animated Spellbook is another good one that friends of mine uh, told me about because I showed them a thing from Puffin Forest. And they're like, this reminds me of Animated Spellbook. And I was like, oh, what's that? And I started watching Animated Spellbook. It was mostly about like 5e Dungeon and Dragon stuff, which I've only have one campaign in, that, which we've only run like once. But, you know. Still, it's nice. Yeah, yeah, I see you as all the emeralds. We're, we'll, we'll, I'll do that maybe one day on my own. Not today, though. Anywho, guys, I hope you enjoyed Sonic Mania, and I'll see you next time. Actually, I nearly have as many continues as this game. That's kind of funny. Now you guys get to see it. See, I wasn't lying. I had more Chaos Emeralds in this run. <laughs> one more. <laughs> all right, folks. Have a good day. Bye.